Earlier this morning, we heard from a local nurse at UC San Diego describing what it's like treating COVID-19 patients. Christina Denciel spoke to her again about how she has protected herself from the virus. Can I ask you real quickly about the state of of your PPEs, of the ventilators? I feel like a lot of people are, uh, you know, we're hearing that, you know, our nurses were not equipped yeah. with the proper PPEs and there were not enough ventilators. I know that was a scare for a while. Can you talk about that? Sure. So. Um, I'm happy to confirm that I have never been put in an unsafe position, neither have my coworkers. We have been provided at UCSD with all of the PPE that is required for us to go into these rooms. Um, UCSD, I believe, actually was even offering some of the other hospitals in the community some of our PPE supplies. So from what I understand and from coworkers that I have, my experience is that we, we are fine and we are being provided everything that we need. My employer is not going to make me go into a room without having the proper PPE on. Um, I'm very lucky to work at UCSD for that reason. We have plenty of ventilators. We get a daily report on how many people are on ventilators, whether they have COVID or not, and how many ventilators we have left. They've even offered training to us. So those of us that have not, you know, I work on like a step down ICU. They've offered me training so that I can um, be ready just in case the surge comes and I need to take care of ventilated patients. And, and with the COVID patients that you've seen, can you talk about a situation, can you tell us or give us an example of how quickly things can deteriorate? Sure. Um, so basically we measure, on our unit, we can take patients on just a regular nasal cannula in their nose up to six liters of oxygen. After that, then you need to put them on a, on a face mask and that can go up to 15 liters of oxygen. Um, and then after the 15 liters of oxygen, very quickly we're intubating these patients, putting them on a ventilator. Um, this can all happen in an hour. I mean, yesterday, I'm, yesterday I had a situation with a patient that um, from the time I got there until four o'clock yesterday, he was in the ICU. So it's, you know, we, we're starting to understand what this disease looks like, what it looks like when they're starting to deteriorate, even though these patients don't have any pre-existing conditions. Um, really watching the O2 monitoring because um, it can drop in, in a matter of minutes. Mm. What is the hardest thing for you as a nurse going into work, knowing you are treating these, these COVID patients? Um, this is unknown and this is a novel virus. And um, while I feel confident in the research that has been done across the globe so far, there still is that underlying anxiety of we have no idea what we're dealing with. Um, I can say that they've tested um, most of our employees in the entire UCSD health system. And from what I understand, nobody has tested positive for it, but none of us have also tested positive for the antibodies for this virus. So it scares me a little bit that none of us are developing immunity to it. It does mean that our PPE procedures are working, but going to work every day to take care of, I'm walking into a room with a person who has a virus that has shut down the entire globe. I mean, that level of anxiety and still doing my job confidently, um, I, I couldn't do it without my coworkers, obviously, and working for a great health system. But I mean, that's it. That underlying, we don't really know much about this is, is very scary. So my last question then is, so then where does your hope come from? If you know, you're going in and you're saying that your coworkers are helping you, where, how, do you how do you do it? What are you hoping for now? Yeah, so we actually have, it just gave me chills to think about it, we do these big celebrations when our patients get discharged. So we make a huge deal out of it, and we are clapping, and the other day we did one and we followed, he had to go home in an ambulance, because when they still are positive and they're going to go home and isolate, they, they have to go home in an ambulance, he can't go home with the family, but we followed him all the way to the ambulance and cheered him on clapping, and, you know, seeing patients that have been in the hospital for a month and were intubated multiple times. Um, you know, I had this one patient that I got to send, I got to be there when he first got to the hospital, I got to bring him back to our unit after being intubated, and then I got to be the one to discharge him and sign that paperwork. And it's, it's those moments, that's what keeps us going, and knowing that, you know, we are sending people back home to their families.